Kia ora everyone. I want to talk to you a little bit about intensity levels. How hard should you be working during an exercise session? So it's important to know how hard we're working our bodies. It needs to be enough to encourage our body to either maintain its fitness level or in many cases improve it. We also need to know when we're doing too much so that we avoid immediate injury or overtraining which, as it starts to build up, can also cause injury, but also other things like suppressed immunity, poor sleep, mood changes, just a general dis-ease. Some of these things can show that you're actually doing too much. We need to listen to our body and make sure that if we have signs like this, accompanied with lots of exercise, perhaps we should listen and just take a day off. So everybody needs to be able to assess their own intensity level. It's really difficult for a trainer to know how hard you're working because you're the one that's feeling it. And it's even more difficult in a situation like this where I cannot see you. So please, it's really important that you get to know your own body and get to know how hard it's working. So what are the, what are the different things we're looking for? How hard your heart is beating is a clear indicator of cardiovascular effort. Again, we're looking for low to moderate perhaps for most of us, especially if we are in the older population category. So using a heart rate monitor can be an excellent way to know exactly how hard we are working. Um, but not all of us really want to go uh, down that road with a piece of equipment. But if you are interested in um, using, using heart rate monitors, then you're looking 50 to just over 60% is a light, light um, exertion level. Now that's percentage of your maximum heart rate. So from mid 60s to um, mid 70% of your maximum heart rate, that is us going into a moderate level of intensity. All right, so even the moderate level, it's actually quite hard. But, word of warning, many of us on medications cannot use heart rate as a reliable source of intensity levels. For example, asthma inhalers, ACE inhibitors used for cardiac conditions, they all give us elevated responses to heart rate. So in other words, your heart will be beating faster because of the medication and not the workout. Beta blockers for hypertension can cause a reduced reading for your heart rate. So it's really important to read the leaflets that come with your medication or even better, speak to your doctor about that. So you've got a clear indicator of how your medication may be affecting your performance during work. One of the best ways that I use during a workout is the talk test. This lets me know how much spare oxygen I have in my body during the workout that I'm doing. For a moderate intensity workout, I want to be breathing quite heavily through my mouth and able to hold a conversation, but the sentences are getting a little shorter and my breath is getting a little bit more precious. And also it's gone from an activity, which we may describe a workout in the low intensity range, to definitely a workout, yeah. When doing resistance work with weights, we can use the sensation within the muscles as an idea of how hard we're working. And again, going for that moderate level of quite hard is really useful to gauge where we're at with that. How many reps should you be lifting? Depends. If you want to build endurance, we tend to go for more repetitions with lighter weights. So that's 15 to 20 repetitions at one time. If you want to build a little bit of muscle mass or a bit of strength itself, then you're going to have a few lower repetitions, but it's going to be with a higher weight. Yes, yeah, so maybe 8 to 12 reps. However, going any lower than that 
really means that you'll be lifting even higher weights. And I would like you to have a fitness professional beside you to be able to guide you through that. How do you know what the weight is? You want to be able to get to the end of that set, be it 12, be it 15, and think, whew, this is getting a bit tiring. Always, please, please leave one, two clean repetitions left in the bag just for safety, okay? But you do want to be feeling fatigue within the muscle. Low to moderate intensity is really good for most of us, especially if we have a chronic condition. That is going to get us fitter, but it's going to get us fitter safely. Before you begin any exercise regime, please get the clearance of your doctor so that you know how hard you can work with your condition, with your replaced joint, with your arthritis. You will get stronger. You will notice fitness gains. The quality of your life will improve because of it, but you'll do it safely. I want you to be able to enjoy your life, to get out there and do the things that you love and improve your fitness along the way. So guys, I'm gonna show you a few little tweaks that you can do to make some exercises a little bit easier, but also a little bit harder if that's what you're looking to do. We're gonna look at the squat first of all, which is a movement involving the hips sinking back to use the glute muscles round here. Obviously the legs are all involved, but I want you to think of it as a hip exercise. Now I'm coming down quite low here, and somebody who has got pretty good leg strength should be able to do this. In fact, you could even add on a little bit of a pulse. You could even add on some lovely long lunges to make it harder again. But what do you do if you are not able to do that? First of all, you could just reduce the height of your squat. Take the speed down. And that's something you can do with a lot of exercises, is reduce the range and just take the movement nice and slow and controlled. That way you ensure that the movement is done well without rushing and overloading your computer. However, using a chair can sometimes be really beneficial for a squat. Now I've ra raised this up using some folded towels. So what I now have is a surface with which I can comfortably control the descent of my squat, allowing me to rise up. Now this over time will become easier allowing me to reduce the height down until eventually I'm on my regular chair or I don't need my chair at all. For lunges, the range again will become pretty useful. You can also have obstacles and equipment like chairs which you want you can hold on to so a lunge perhaps may look like this if you're just beginning to work on leg strength just a soft gentle bend of the knees ensuring the knee does not ride over the front of the toes like this yep think about dropping yourself straight down now I like rear stepping lunges because it takes the pressure off the front knee when we take a forward step, that forward momentum can sometimes cause this to happen, where we continue that roll forwards, the heel lifting at the front causes all sorts of knee pressure if you have a susceptibility for that. So taking a rear stepping lunge, dropping down, and then as you start to get stronger, you'll be able to step further back, drop down a little bit deeper. Now for the push. Different levels of push up here. Starting at the wall, hands are at chest height and you lower yourself carefully down towards the wall. 
Feeling the work in the chest, keeping the elbows facing out, about 45 degrees is good. If you find that is getting a little bit too easy, you can bring yourself onto a surface like a kitchen bench. I'm going to use the table here, where you again lower yourself down, hands coming to chest height, elbows coming out about 45 degrees. When this starts to get too much, this may happen. You don't want that. Yeah, so make sure with planks or push-ups in these types of positions that your body is flat. Sometimes also you can see this, or you may want to, want to do this. What do you think? It's not a push-up, is it? It's us trying to get around this not being the right setup. So if you find that this is you, you're not going to get better at push-ups. You need to come back to something a little higher. Practice this until you're confident and really good at this, and then move onto a bench or progress onto the floor. Now here, the knees, the face comes forwards. Next level, we're in more of a straight line from shoulder to knee. You don't have to come down. Remember we talked about range with the squat? Here is fine until you get your range. And then from there, of course, you can come up onto the toes. Now, we want you to make clean, safe movements. Once you start losing the technique, it is time to stop. You have fatigued your body. Give it a bit of a rest. If you're on set work, give it a rest and then go back again, but make sure that your technique is clean. So leg lifts can be done to help strengthen the side of the hip. So we may begin here. This could be the movement that we start with. To progress this, we could come down onto the floor. Now again, not everybody enjoys coming down and up from the floor, especially if you have high blood pressure. So here, lifting the leg against gravity has already increased the intensity. For those of us that want to work a little bit harder, however, we may need to invest in something like this, which is a resistance band. By standing on the band, now the tightness of the rubber here will either increase or decrease the intensity of the movement. And you can either do side steps, call these little penguin walks. Little penguin doesn't walk like this, eh? <laughs> or you can stand on the spot and kick one leg out. Just remember, as I said, the amount of band that you give yourself here will indicate how hard it's going to be to stretch it further. So moving back up into the upper body, let's have a look at the pull movements. Now, it's a little bit more difficult to use body weight for pull unless you have a bar or suspension straps. Not all of us have that. So what we can do is use an object. Now, in some of my home workouts, we've been using milk bottles filled with water, tins of beans. I'm going to use these weights, which this one is one and a half kilos. Now, these have got a Velcro strap that can go around the wrist. It might even fit around my ankle, this one. And that is another way that you can increase the workout intensity. But I'm just going to use these as a handy weight to show you this pull movement. So I'm going to stand with one knee perhaps, hand on the back of the chair. You could even have your hand down here if it's comfortable. Body is strong, hips and shoulders are level, single arm pulling. Now if you have sore knees, absolutely can work here, you can work here. It's just this little bent over position is going to allow us to work against gravity. 
For those that want a little bit more, two arms, bending. Now we have no support except our tummies and glute muscles. Softening the knees to allow our legs to be athletic. And this has increased the range and intensity of the movement, yeah? Lifting high through the back rather than a little bit smaller single arm. Intensity levels can increase when we do little pulses, triple pulses in that mid to high range. Taking out the rest phases whenever we are here, this is a rest phase. Other ways that you can dial up or dial down the intensity of your workout. One more thing I would like to just show you with the bands. If you have any wrist issues where bending the wrist, doing a push-up can, can become aggravated, a lot of my guys use the bands. I'll just anchor it around here. And this can be a really good way to do a push keeping the wrist nice and straight. So you can have this option to manage to work the chest, back of the arm, without aggravating the wrist. So guys, I hope I've given you a few ideas of how you can take a workout, make it a little bit easier for yourself if you have any conditions or areas that are limiting you, but still change some of the other areas and make them a little bit more intense. Keep an eye on your rests. Keep an eye on how many reps you're doing. How fatigued are you getting? Keep an eye on the speed that you're working at. The overall intensity of the body should be really apparent to you and keep it close to what your goals were for that particular workout. Any questions, guys, please do make some comments down below and I'll get back to you. Bye for now.